here. Who's who's done the I am's? Zavi has, um, Karen has, Vicky, you know, I've called on you plenty of times. Marcus, um, Day Day, you've done the I am's. Real quick, when y'all standing up here, do I look like that? Like y'all look? I am a millionaire. I am here. Well, you just know the scripture. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Well, you just say it. I, I, make sure next time y'all up here, if I do that, somebody stop and check me. Because you guys say it like it's the same scripture over and over. And you're losing the meaning of it. And you see that when you're up here. You see a lot of things when you're up here. But you don't notice it, Mother Anna, until you get up here and you're like, man, God, do I look like that to you? Well, I'm just taking something as simple as your creation and your blessing that you have spoken on me, I'm just taking it as like, yeah, have dominion. That ain't sound like people that wants dominion. Maybe we don't understand what that means. So let me, somebody check me. I'm not here to rebuke. My brother say I always be going off when I'm teaching. I'm going to try to be nice today, y'all. <laughs> Shut up, Mark, if we talk I'm going to try my hardest. But the man of God, and I've been a little absent. Um, I ain't backslid. I've just been busy, but I thank God I've been working. And <clears throat> that day beyond got me ripping and running. That senior year for parents who have had that senior year, y'all didn't tell me it cost this much. Everything, every week is something else. You need money for that. They find your fines. Man, he still owed a lunch lady from Kellum. Come on now, just get my baby his diploma. Y'all tripping. They don't forget nothing. They wait till that senior year, that last week of school, to just bam. Uh uh, don't think you're walking just yet. Hold on. So we, I mean, we just get back in town, go again. He leave tomorrow to go. Thursday, he goes to Chicago. I said, boy, if you don't sit your butt down somewhere, he's doing a concert tonight, so keep my baby in. But that's my continual praise. So I thank God for that. I don't take that for granted. So the man of God has made it to Italy safely, and as did the other saints um, that I've heard from. So thank God for that. I'm glad that people are celebrating in Rome. <laughs> Yesterday, Grace Apostolic officially turned 29 years old. Anybody been here for 29 years? Anybody been here for 25 years? Anybody here? Coco, you was, how old are you? 22 years? No. You've been here longer than that. Mm -mm. Yeah, we've been here longer than that because I've been here longer than that. I wasn't at 22nd Street. Um, but thank God Coco's still here. Not that many people that are still around. Thank God she's still here. That's a blessing. So this is relationship class. Even out of town, you could be out of the country, you could be in Mars. You'll get that text, that phone call, that inbox. I need you to teach. So, okay. This is relationship class. And for those we have our, I'm glad to see that Tamika and Jeff are still married. I trust y'all still married. <laughs> I, I'm not being funny. I've been here long enough where people didn't make it that long. <laughs> And not just married, but happily married. He's smiling, she's smiling. He, okay. Because as Tamika will tell you, and anybody else, Brandy and Star, who's coming in here, marriage is ministry. <laughs> marriage is ministry. I don't want you to sit here, Erica, and pray and fast and cry, and God bless me with a husband. You are asking God for a next phase of ministry. You have to understand that so you won't just get married and get relaxed. There's some things we're going to do. I'm single. I don't plan to be that way for too long, but there's some things I need to do to prepare myself. Everybody who's been married will tell you, you thought you had it all covered and stuff comes up and you be like, wow, okay, they just going to call me right while I'm teaching. I, I'm only got it because Davion's going to be leaving his concert soon, but marriage is ministry. And when you learn, as man of God taught, when you learn to perfect your praise, that helps you be introspective, being introspective without oversight. If you can do that in your singleness, it makes it that much easier to do it when you get married. If you can do it at any age, when you understand wrong from right, you could be introspective. You could say, mm, I didn't say that right. Let me review that. 
let me be honest with me and say maybe I came across a little harsh. That conviction, that little voice, that's conviction telling you like, nah, mm -mm. go back and apologize. Go back, that ain't me, that ain't right, that's introspective. When you can look within yourself, if you have a continual praise, your introspective is that sharper. You have a sense of discernment, not just about other people, but about yourself. At least I do. I'm easily convicted, the littlest things. And I sometimes wonder, God, you get me about everything. I want it to continually to be that way. I want it to always be that way, and sometimes I just... Not to pick myself apart, but God don't let me get away with anything because of who I am and what I represent to the kingdom. You can send me anywhere in the world, God, and I have introspection. I know and I have a discernment of myself. Before I add anybody to this, before I take on anybody's last name, I'm fully aware of everything that I bring to the table, flaws and all, and that is important because a lot of people get married and they mask that. They try to hide. And those who are married know in marriage you cannot hide. Things come out. You can act like while y'all was dating or collecting data, data or whatever you were doing, talking on the phone, well, they can't smell your farts when you're on the phone, but when you get married, you be like, dude, for real? <laughs> it come out like that? You, you're going to have to have some bowel movements. You're going to have some, you know, funky clothes. Hopefully your drawers ain't, you know, they ain't just found out that you wear one pair for the week. Hopefully you just take for granted. I don't know. Is that something you ask in data collection? You might want to write that down, those who are single. Hey, do you change your drawers every day? It's some people that don't. Some people be like, hey, I changed them yesterday. I'm good today. <laughs> You take that for granted. Maybe you, you laughing, but maybe you want to know. Vicki, don't, we don't know you change your drawers because you by yourself. <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you would be amazed at the stuff people have gotten married and found out. It, it's more than just, <laughs> it's some basic things that you just take for granted that you just used to dealing with day day. Lexi Poop might not want to put up with that. It's cute now because you guys like each other and you can sing and you be singing those songs and you just make her heart melt, okay? But there's going to be some time she's like, I don't want to hear nothing. I want you to take the trash out, Dana. It's as simple as that. Sing the trash out to the curb. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> there's some things when I'm by myself, if I'm irritable, I just go in my room, close the door. Nobody got to deal with that. Well... You know, you get married, you can't just close the door. You can't just say, <laughs> you stay outside, sleep on the couch tonight, I just want to stretch out. Am I willing to give up? <laughs> Karen, you willing, <laughs> that's my girl, you willing to clean off the other side of the bed? When you're single, you can just have everything spread out. I do it and I sleep on the corner. <laughs> well, your husband may not want that. So you have to prepare yourself. Am I living now to prepare myself for marriage? Is it going to be a big shock or surprise when he come over my house? <laughs> and see that my blinds are hanging, and you know, because you don't change your blinds. You ain't washed the walls. Little stuff you take for granted. You used to living with you in that morality. That's just you. You nasty. You dirty. But no, somebody else might not want my son. <laughs> I'm looking at Trey. My baby is just a, <laughs> he's a little germaphobe. He's irritating with that. He, he, he really is. But well, Trey's all in love, Kenny, 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 Kenny. Now she's rolling her eyes like, Kenny, you don't take all that. Well, little things. And I say that to say the little things go and blow up. They blow up. And usually it's because of what's on your mind. Just like on, in the spiritual, your little praise can blow up. Just a little praise. But it goes back to what's on your mind. What are you thinking about? Are, why are you getting beat up? Why is the enemy just running rampant? Why is your mind idle? That is his playground. What are you thinking about? Why when people come in to the church and <laughs> you standing at the door, Nate, why are, why are they not greeted? If you a greeter, you a usher, somebody come in here, good morning, good evening, hello. That's service. Don't be an usher if you can't greet people to come in the door. I walked in today, Elijah opens up for prayer. Hello. Okay. 
Well, shoot, that's what I want to hear. Don't be a, a nurse. You come in here, I'm crying. Just throw me some tissue. No, 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 no. We have a responsibility. Everybody in here been here for a little bit amount of time. Somebody come in here, should be a smile. You can't be bringing all that stuff in here. That's, that's set aside. I'm here to serve. Don't do this house like you do your house. Now, when you go home, then you can be evil again. But stay single. When you come into the house of God, you get to look, look at Karen. Karen just sitting there smiling. And when she go home, she can take her glasses off, flop around, and be evil. Look at her and smile. Amen. That's not my message. That's not. I'm going to go on. Be an introspective. Your praise. Your extended dark periods. Bishop talked about it. When you don't praise, they get unnecessarily extended. Those dark times in your life, those dark times in my life, you'll sit up. It turns into a depression. It turns into what was just a little mind fight, what was just a little negative seed that was deposited by somebody now has turned into full-blown depression. And you don't understand why you don't want to get up. You don't understand why you feel that way. You don't understand why you don't want to deal with nobody. Why you just angry all the time. Why you just sad all the time. Why you just look at yourself and you don't see anything positive. You have got to stop that. And it starts with just simple praise. God, I thank you. I'm, God, I'm, let, let me stop right now. Sometimes I get on a roll. We do. We get on a roll. I don't have this. My son need this. I need money for that. And now I got it. Oh, and now somebody's going to ask me to open up for service. Don't they understand I had to work late today? Why I always got to be the one they call upon to open up the church for prayer? Why I got to be the only one to sweep? Stop and say, God, I thank you. I thank you that you saw me. I thank you that I was the one that was available. I'm not just on the enemy's mind. He ain't just trying to wreck everything that I got going on. I'm on your mind. I thank you that I have the activities of my limb. Let me just stop this little pity party in my mind and say, God, you could have done it for anybody else, but you chose to do it for me. On May 5th, 2015, you woke me up. You stood at the foot of my bed and watched me sleep. There's times you have slept through storms and a little bird chirping and God just turn you over. It's time to get up. Everybody didn't get to inhabit today. What did you, what were you thinking about when you woke me up today? What did you expect from me when you woke? It wasn't complaining. It wasn't to remind you or to remind myself that my bank account is negative. What did you say? Here's an opportunity for you to praise me so I can bless you because I'm waiting to bless you. I can't wait to do that thing for you, Trajan. I cannot wait. You don't understand the personality of God because you don't get used to praising. Praising and magnifying him gets you in his presence so you start knowing wait a minute uh-uh that's why in our Sunday school class we going over that that's why Jeremiah told those in captive because you are captive in your mind uh-uh you got to know the mind of God what is it he's not thinking evil of you his thoughts of peace you got to know that about God you got to know that about God. Your praise opens that up. Now you're starting to feel a little better. I promise you, you can't stand there and start praising God and then turn around and cuss somebody out. Check your praise if you do. Check your praise. Check your praise. You can't get off into it. Well, you don't understand. And sometimes the enemy, you'll be on that road for a long time. Will you so beat down? Will you have to manufacture a praise? You can fake it till you make it. You can say it. God, I just thank you for that I could take a step. You might just have to get up and just walk around. God, I thank you that the right side of my brain is controlling the left side of my body. It's just that simple. God, I thank you for my mind. I thank you that I can even speak. I thank you that I can even, I have the vocal cords. I remember when I was so sick. I had strep throat, had bronchitis, had the flu, had fevers, had chills. I remember when I was just down. I couldn't even take a sip of water. But God, I thank you. It's going to get that simple. And God said, okay, now we're on the road. Here we go. Here we go. You're getting there. You can get in there. And by the end of that thing, you're feeling better. You said, you know what, God? You ain't got to do nothing else. You have done so much for me. And don't be filled with the Holy Ghost and then start bringing things to your remembrance. Wait a minute. That was you in that car accident. Hold on now. That was you that he supernaturally deposited money in there. That was you that he sent the saint by to bless you when you didn't have no food. Now, don't get sedity with it. Don't get real, real back and say, you know what, God? I remember being beat down as a kid. That's me standing here. It's all a miracle. Wait a minute. That was me angry. That was me molested. I don't have any reason not to praise you. It gets that simple. 
It gets that simple. That's being introspective. Things start, that stops that. That's having a word for the word. As the man of God talked about, that's being introspective. That's speaking a word on your situation. It provides light. Now you are the light. Now you are not, you're not attracted to negative people. You can tell negative people hang together. They just beat each other up. They all got something negative to say. Why am I around? Why do you know so, everybody's a mess? Why are you even around those kind of people that tell you people a mess? Somehow you've been entertaining that. It's some people that you're like, mm, you know what? I just, I just thank God. They ain't going to keep hearing that. You can't have somebody might need come to you with somebody else's business, and you be like, you know what? I thank God for them. They're going to get sick of that. Eventually, they're going to be like, you know what? I see you on your little holy road. Yes, I am. I don't want to hear it. But if you entertain that, be like, well, you don't. Even if you try to explain it, well, you don't understand, you know, sister so-and-so been doing good. No, no, no. You got to stop that because that will wheel you in. You can't explain that. The enemy ain't that dumb. He ain't dumb. Next thing you know, it's a seed deposited. And now you know stuff about somebody that they never told you what. Now you know all Cynthia's business. What, what's that going to profit you? Because somebody else has just planted a seed. Well, you know, I don't understand why she sit on the front row after all these years. You'd be like, you know what? I ain't never thought of that. She do be sitting on the front row all the time. Why can't she sit on the second row? Somebody else's turn. Why day they minister day they hold on? I've been here longer than that. I know God's speaking to you. You know what that is? You have been here a long time. Now we got to call him Minister Day Day. What's his real name? Why we can't call him Minister Daydreon? I mean, you just little seeds, and then you just interpret it. You just I, no, mm -mm, I thank God. Hey, I, I I don't know what he gonna have to face as Minister Day Day. No, nope, let's just be in prayer for it. I thank God. It's just that simple. You got to have a word. You better have a word. You can't entertain. And it don't get, I don't care who it is. Spouse, relationship, class, you got to have that in your singleness. So when you get married, your husband should not be hearing you talking about everybody else. He should be so used to your praise. You're praising God. You're praising him. And you're praising others. That's what you want to be attracted to, Darnell. You know what? I don't see her say anything positive about none of the other sisters. She don't have nothing nice to say. Yeah, she cute. Yeah, she all that. But I ain't never heard her encourage nobody else. I've never seen her give somebody else a hug. I've never heard her say something positive. That's something to look forward to because that's what you're going to have to marry. You can't tell me that person is used to praising God and God ain't dropped somebody in their spirit. Honey, I promise he will. I'm not just talking about you. It's easy for me to, to praise Karen. That's my girl. That's easy. But I'm talking about somebody, maybe, but, uh, the young lady, I don't, hey, I'm glad to see you. She come in here, she's just switching around and just sit down. And when she see you, darn now, she's smiling. But you know what? She didn't pass the whole row. She didn't pass Taisha by. Ain't said nothing to star. Mother sitting there. Just withering away. She ain't said, Mother, can I help you with something? But she just flaunts into the front. She's smiling when she see you. That's something you better check. You're going to have to live with that. You're going to have to live with that. It's awesome to have a testimony of Tamika, her Facebook post. And that's one thing about putting stuff in writing. Man, in my field, you put something in writing, you're going to get caught. You put it in writing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, but you said that on January 3rd, 2009. H hold on now. So God fell off. Oh, no, you said that. That's one thing about what Nikita's doing. No, no. So if she fall out with any of her sisters, <laughs> she can pull up her own post. Now, you said, I thank God for my sister Sheena. She all this and all that. That's the beauty of doing that. It reminds you of, wait a minute. <laughs> that, you know what? <laughs> wait a minute. My mind, there was a time when my mind was right. And it ain't Sheena. It was a time when my mind was right. Now I'm seeing something different. First of all, who planted that seed? This is not my, I'm going to get off of this because I didn't come to talk about this. Who planted that seed and why are you watering that? Why are you watering that? And I guarantee you, if Satan can fill your mind with stuff about somebody else, that's because he got you on lock. You a done deal. You a done deal. If your money's messed up, check your mind. 
You trying to get, get my mind on my money and my money on my mind? If you ain't got no money, what's on your mind? Nothing. Your, your mind negative. And what's your checking account? Negative. What you thinking about? What's your mind? I promise you what's on your mind reflects who you are. There are people here, Cynthia's always, I remember when our son passed away, I first thing came to my mind when I heard about it, I said, that's the one who always has a smile and gives me a hug. It's my turn to now have to give her a hug. I never forget, that's the first thing came to my mind. When somebody say, oh yeah, Sister Taisha, oh Sister Taisha, the one that's always, good morning, hello. That's the first thing when you go through, somebody going to remember you for. Not, oh, that's the moody Taisha. Well, last week she was, good morning, hello, but this week she just came in. You got to watch that. You got to watch. That's what's on your mind. That's just how schizophrenic your mind is. Up and down, up and down. Well, what does it say in Psalm 34? We can get it real quick. So your mind is up and down. We all have, well, well we all have good days and bad days. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's something that's constant. There's something that happened today that happened yesterday that happened last week. There's something that's constant. God did something constant for you. And you owe him something back in return. It gets that simple. It ain't profound. It ain't deep. It ain't even in Hebrew or Greek. It's something he did consistently. Anybody in here over 40? You ain't got to be ashamed. Raise your hand up. Mother Ann, I know you better. Mother Ann, get your hand up. Who here over 40? Mother Gracie got a little pinky up. Okay. 30, over 30. Who here over 30? Man, he did that 30 years strong. Okay, if you was over 40, your hand should still be up. You didn't go down. <laughs> I don't want you to think. No. Consistently. You little young buck, Gracie. I knew I smell some milk. 30, 25 and up. Come on now, 25. Quarter of a century. God did that every day. Keep your hand up. Because with your hand is up, it's going to go into praise. Every day consistently for 25 plus years. He didn't miss a day. Your heart beat. It wasn't a day you skipped a beat. He woke you up every single day. Some days you woke up late, some days you got up early, but you got up every single day. You had the activities of your limb, even when you were sick in your body. Come on, you remember some days you were just dead dog sick. He woke you up, he didn't care how much money you had. He was so merciful, even when you did that thing he told you not to do, he woke you up anyway. You didn't deserve that, you didn't do anything to deserve that. You didn't do anything to deserve it. He did it consistently, continually. That blood flow, star, I feel you, star. That blood flow continually. I celebrated 42 years last week. And the first thing came to my mind, this heart continually was beating. Whether I was working out or not, whether I was eating right or not, when my weight went up and went down, that heart kept going. When I was sick in my body, when I was sick in my mind, when I was worried about things I couldn't do nothing about, he kept going. Took care of three kids by myself, he kept going. Made it through years at North High. Made it through being molested. Made it through being thrown away. Talked about lies. But one thing that was consistent, God kept me alive. Not to abuse me. He took me through that thing. That was continual. He didn't say, he wasn't conditional, he wasn't temperamental. He didn't wake up with a bad day. It was part of his nature when those rains came down, when the storms came. It was part of nature, it was part of the circle. It wasn't because God was mad at me. I serve a continual God. I serve a consistent God. I had to remind myself about that. Wait a minute, hold on. Don't you dare ask God for something else. Don't you dare ask him for nothing else. He's been continually, and you are not worthy. He made you worthy. And only thing he's asking for you to consistently do, and you struggling with it, what does Psalm 34 say? 
I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on. Well, why can't he ask for that? Why can't he, Monique, say, can you just bless me at all times? I blessed you when you weren't right. Can you just bless me? Can that praise continually come out of your mouth? Does everything have to be lined up? Does everything have to be going right? Do you have to like everybody? Everybody got to tell you how great you are today. We talked about marriage being ministry. Everything got to go right in your marriage before you get that continual praise. That's what I love about me and Bishop talk about you all the time. I said, you know what? She got a record. It's one thing to put it in everybody. I'm not saying that. Don't you start journaling stuff on Facebook. People kill me. Don't mimic. Do you? However you do it. But she has a history, and she put it out there. Now you're held accountable for that. She put it out there. And that's one thing about me. could be like, no. Nah. One time we was going through our little finance class, she's like, no, nah, put everything else out on Facebook. Let me just keep going. Keep going. She got a history, so he can look and see. Be like, okay. Hmm. You know what your wife was doing this time last year before you. It's already out there. Praising God continually. There were some hard times. She ain't always had money. She ain't always been blessed. Those kids were a handful. I got three boys, so I know what two boys would do. There were some times she probably wanted to give up. She ain't always been super duper fine like she is. Well, yes, she has been fine, just fine. But there's some times she had to struggle to get that smile. Sometimes she had to ignore some things. Sometimes she had to speak a word. She had to say that to her. That's why she's prepared for the ministry of marriage, because she has capitalize on that in her singleness and that's where we get caught that's why I said God expose me everybody who's single today who've been crying God send me a husband Lord I want you to do bless me like you bless everybody else thank God that you single today because you weren't ready you weren't ready he, he, he didn't make no mistake he didn't make no mistake there's some things you had to do your praise won't continue because there's some people to be like but what about so-and-so? I know that they won't continue. Number one, that's your problem. That, that's it. That's the seed of somebody else. I can't do nothing about Sheena and Tony. I'm trying to get Linda together. It, L Linda is a, a, look, Linda is a handful. <laughs> that, that girl is off the chain. It, it takes continual shut up, sit down. My brothers know people close to me know. I, they done been around my slip-ups. And, and they just remind me about it, but... <laughs> I'm a handful. I have to constantly, and, and I'm like, come on. Why ain't this thing got a little easier? Nope. It gets rougher. The older I get, the more accountable I am. Wait a minute. God didn't kept your heart beating longer than he kept Sheena's heart beating. Wait a minute. Come on. You can't let her out. You better not. You better not let your praise outdo her praise. Matter of fact, your praise should attract her praise to get to that level. Now God is magnified. Now that thing that trickled over to Trajan. That's how it should be. You better make sure it is. You better make sure. I'm telling you that praise is important. So I said your husband should be used to hearing you praise. Praise God, praising him, and praising others. Men, Darnell, check her out. If she's not complimentary, I'm not just talking about on good days. You should find some. I don't care if somebody's hair is pur pink, purple, and blue. Girl, you know what? You just remind me of the color of the rainbows. I thank God for you. Say something nice. Find something to say. <laughs> you just fruity and smell delicious like a Skittle. Say, find something to say. I just thank God for you. <laughs> they might not have the style that you have. <laughs> it ain't even about your style. <laughs> now, if you got on a red Kool-Aid suit, you might have to struggle to find something, but you find something to say. <laughs> I thank God that my brother made it through that red Kool-Aid face. Praise God. Come on, that's enough to praise God right there. He could have been stuck in there, coming up in here thinking he's super fine. With his hair all come to the left. And because God is dealing with you on being complimentary, you struggling to find something to say <laughs> to your red Kool-Aid little brother. <laughs> you know, and, and, and but find something. Hey, you know what? <laughs> when I look at you, I'm just thirsty. <laughs> I don't know. Find something to say. Find something to say. But my point being, it's so much a part of you. You be like, you, I, I just praise God today. <laughs> I praise God you made it. <laughs> I'm so used to praising God. I'm so used to praising people. I'm so used to praise. It's just a part of me. Praise is who I am. And that does something. That builds up your credit. That's another thing before you get married. Check your credit. 
And okay, those claps was like, whoa. <laughs> People, <laughs> look, if you're married, just, just nod your head and say, yay, Lord. <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> she know, she got you sitting up front. And you're single this. Single people, even if you didn't clap, when I told you to clap, thank God that you're single today because you weren't ready. You get an opportunity to make a deposit into your spiritual bank account with God, to build up your credit with God. Because you, you know what? I brought my credit here. I brought it. I'm going to just show you. This is in the natural. This thing a little thick. Let's see. This is my credit report. Y'all ain't got to get all quiet. I ain't going to pass it out. Got some things on here. This tells everything about this. This is a snapshot of who I am. This is not who I tell you I am, Kelly Joe. This is a snapshot of what's on my mind, how I think, how I handle my affairs. Tells me, first part, it's like, you know what, one, two, three, four, five. You know what, you've been moving a lot. You have about seven different addresses for number one. Be like, what's, what's going on? What's, what's with the instability? I looked at that. I said, I ain't never lived on. Yeah, I did. I remember. <laughs> Be like, I ain't lived on no north. Oh, shoot. That's what, yeah, we was there for a couple of months. Yeah, I had to, had to move out, move over there, north. Uh, this is a snapshot of the instability. Some of these addresses, I remember. I remember moving into them. Some of them, I sure enough remember moving out. <laughs> sure enough. I, I, I should have I should have highlighted those. The day that I move out. But it's on here. This is a snapshot. This is like, man. That's some of these addresses when I had to move back home with my mom, went through a divorce. That's on there. Then we go down to all your jobs. Thank God. That's one area I thank God for. Everybody can't thank God for that. That's just a couple of entries. Been at the same job, Department of Justice, since April 1994. That's a blessing other than that little telemarketing job. But some of y'all, that's two, three, four, five pages. Every six months, it's a new job. Todd, Todd can I tell him what you told him one time? You, one year you had, what is 15? <laughs> tell, tell the Todd real quick, real quick. He, 25, so he's trying to file his taxes. You know y'all be hounding your job for your little W-2. You get your W-2, you be like, oh, man, I got to wait for West. Be like, oh, oh man, I remember when I worked at J.C. Penny for a time. <laughs> man, come on, Coles, 15 different W-2s. I mean, come on, H&R Block, like, dang, and it didn't add up to $10,000. You did all that. <laughs> come on now. That's the one here. That ain't going off. All your jobs, all your instability just can't listen to nobody. You done went to Walmart, Walgreens, Sam's. CVS, you done went to everybody, every store in the mall, and Crossroads is closed. <laughs> every store, that's on here. Think, now, that part pretty good. So they, they, they get you with that, like, you know what, that, that is a snapshot of why the second part may be so, so off. You got all these different residents, and you know there's people that are born into a house and they leave the house, go to college, and they go and buy their own house. They don't have different residences unless you're military. And you try to use that because you in Omaha, well, I'm a military brat. I ain't, nobody in my family been in the military. I ain't no military brat. I just didn't pay rent to some of them. Had to move. Went through a couple of divorces. Had to go back home to mama. Got grown. Didn't want to listen to mama. Tried to move out. You know you couldn't afford no apartment when you was working at West Telemarketing. Had to go back home. That's on here. That, that's your snapshot. All your jobs that correlate with the different residents. Then they tell you, you know, your, your, your Isaac model score, you know, the range is 300 to 850. That's beautiful. Then your little FICA score, the range is 336 to 843. That's great. Then your little Beacon score, 300 to 850. That's great. Then they got a little draft in case you can't read. To show the little draft to show the look that you weigh on this end. <laughs> this is people <laughs> who have maybe a couple of residents, one good job. They over here, you 
all those homes you done lived in, all those jobs, you, you, you down here. It, it go together. It's a snapshot of you. I'm going to get somewhere. Then we get to all these people. Now, come on. And everybody in here know that LVNV funding buy up all your debt. I don't even know who they are. Capital One, I ain't had a Capital One car since two, 07. I don't even remember what I was doing in 07. Capital One, remember. You was at the mall. You was eating. <laughs> doing everything. Racked it up. Then there's all these credit bills. And then student loan people. You know student loan, man. Come on. I graduated from Bellevue University. I forgot I had a degree. When I pulled up my credit report, I had to go pull out my degree. It's like, you know what? You, I'm going to look at you. Because since they everywhere on my credit report, I'm going to look at that degree. I ain't paid for it yet, but I'm going to look at it and <laughs> remind myself of why these people, these student loan people don't go nowhere. This is a snapshot. And, it, and it's, it's some more. My point being is, in my singleness, in all my crying and snotting and Lord send me some help, you know, I got to turn this over and disclose this to him. He has a right to say, you know what, babe? When we get married, we got an extended family. You got kids. You got grandkids. I got kids. This house you in, it's too small. Let's go buy a house. I got to say, um, <coughs> we, well, babe, we might, uh, might have to get a unit in Tommy Rose because according to this... <laughs> We're we not going to go too far. <laughs> Tommy Rose ain't even Tommy Rose no more. It might be Betty Jo now, but we, that's probably all we can get. Because this, this, this is who I, this is who you're giving your last name to. This is a relationship class. If you're taking it serious, you should have this. I have my, I, I do this every time I file my taxes is my annual free credit report, and I pull them up. Every time. And I see, has it been any progress? Because every day I'm standing here, uh, uh, every time we come to service, I'm saying my I am, I am a millionaire. And they like, <laughs> you didn't say your net worth was a millionaire, your net debt might be a million. <laughs> but you, so you got the millionaire part right. <laughs> but you don't have no right asking God for no husband. <laughs> and then that is just not as bad. That is not as bad. That, that, that little... We got to get over to that. That credit score got to get over that hump. Got to go the other way. It's some stability. But I look at this and I say, God, even as jacked up as this is, why are you still with me? Why are you still with me? You, you, you had every right to leave me when I didn't pay the rent at the first price. And you blessed me with another. I, now I have my home. It's a beautiful home. God, why are you still with me? And then he go back to because of Psalm 34. Because I don't want you to let this take you out. I don't want you to let this define you. This is to show you, number one, who you were. I took you in with all this. I opened my arms to you. How dare you have an attitude towards anybody? You brought all this to me. I bought you. I paid the ultimate price. I sent my only son to get tortured and abused because of this, just to wipe this all away. And all I want from you is that Psalm 34, that continual praise. You don't have a reason not to praise. You don't have a reason not to thank God. You don't have a reason to be funky towards nobody. I don't care what they do, because you can look at this and be like, you done done a whole bunch of stuff. And it's not as bad as it used to be, but the thing about me, I'm a master record keeper. I remember when it was worse than this. And just because, and this is the beauty of living, having another birthday, some of the stuff is dropped off. Not that I paid it. I, come on. Some stuff just got canceled before I knew about the five, seven, seven years. Some things just got canceled. But you, and I thank God for that. That's the supernatural. That's the supernatural. That's what my natural praise, my singing unto him got me to that. But it's some things God said, hold on. Hold on. Uh-uh. You're getting older, I need you to be wiser. You know better, you do better. I need you to be a steward over the little things. 
I need you to handle some things so that your grandbabies don't be standing up here teaching and this gets thicker and thicker. There's some people that have one sheet of paper. Some people that just, you know, they have their stuff lined up. It's pretty. This is the natural. This is single people and everybody should have it. Now, if you marry somebody and you now that y'all done cut the cake, you just now seeing this and you like, ooh, woo. This is a source of, this has caused a lot of arguments. Trust me, get married and go and try to get a car and try to get a house. And you'd be like, well, baby, let's just, you know, let's just put it in your name. <laughs> you the head of the house. <laughs> you ain't got to put me on there. <laughs> you know what? We're trying to get insurance. You done went through Geico, Progressive. You done went through American Family, State Farm. Baby, let's just do it. No, they like, hold on, but you married. No, nah. we, we, we need that number. But they're going to run it anyway. Now you got to explain why y'all can't get a Tootsie Roll. I mean, y'all can't get a Tootsie Roll on credit. <laughs> because it is. It didn't go nowhere. You met, somebody gave me their last name. It's on here. They, they got a list of all your names. They kill me with the AKAs. I'll be like, Linda Bailey, Linda Williams, Harling, all the combinations, Pookie, Chili Sauce. We know your stripper name is all on here. We know when you was making money at the Playhouse. <laughs> all that is on here. <laughs> when you was Chili Sauce, come on now. <laughs> so when you try to hide that, because you know I'm a woman of God now, I'm Pastor Linda, be like, baby, you know, what's, who's Chili Sauce? <laughs> what was up with that? <laughs> Chili sauce was on that pole, baby. Chili was on that pole. <laughs> well, God delivered you from the pole, but he, he don't have to live with that. He might not want that. <laughs> he might not want chili, or he might say, you know, bring chili out every now and then. <laughs> My point being, you got you to gotta know this. And some of y'all don't even have this. <laughs> Shut up, Sheena. Was that your name? <laughs> that was not my name. <laughs> That was not my name. I'm just saying. If it was, Mama Joe, that's, I mean, okay, Mama Joe. Mama Joe, and the older you are, the more history you got. My point being, you want to be married? This is marriage class. I'm glad you guys came out, whether the bishop was here or not. I'm glad you guys are, are taking it serious. You know, this is not an elective. You're taking a, mar a you majoring in this class, but you need to do some homework. You need to know what this look like. And if you're already married, you might say, babe, look, let me just, don't leave me. Don't leave me. This ain't, <laughs> you might have to just say, it might have to be on one of your fast days, babe, it's something I got to show you. <laughs> fast and pray up. <laughs> say, babe, this, um, this is the reason why we had to go get our furniture from Renner Center because they didn't pull this. This is the reason why we have Sonny Gerber. <laughs> and then Sonny Gerber would even be like, mm, okay, huh, okay, we'll take that. No credit, bad credit, we're good, we'll take that. But we're going to jack it up so high, now you're paying 35, 45, 50% interest on a piece of junk. <laughs> because it is, because of your history, your snapshot. This, you be like, Lord. I'm going to take this before you. We're going to go over this. We're going to get this handled. This does not represent, this does not represent this. This is my giving statement from last year. And this mug starts from January. You know, Coco go all the way back. My first, and all it ties offering, ties off, like clockwork, January, February, March, April. I mean, however many weeks was in that month, that's how many entries I have. Did not miss a beat. Did not miss a beat. And that's not just bragging. I mean, just all the way to December. I didn't skip. Let me, let, me not, let me not lie. January, February, March, April, May. May was a long month. June, July, August, September, October, November, December. All the way. Tithes offering. Just constant. I can wave this and say, wait a minute now. And, and here's, the, you can look at it two ways and say, God, my credit with you is good. And God can say, and then... And then you can go to uh, MP Dodge and say, okay, now my credit, my natural credit does not reflect who I say I am in the spirit. Something's wrong here. 
Somebody, what's going on here? What, what, what's going on here? Constant. Constant. Anybody, real quick. What, what's lack, lack of faith? What else? What's, what's going on? Why don't these reflect each other? This saying, you ain't missed the tithe or offering payment. You ain't missed it. This saying, yeah, you paying them, but you ain't gave us jack. This, this is looking at this like, dang, okay, she made that. Okay, well, dang. I wish we'd have got just did some stuff on here that was like $240. What was, what's going on here? Double standard. Not being responsible in the natural. How many times we come here, this is, I mean, the conviction for not doing this is strong because you know, you know the principles of God. You hear them, you hear the teaching, but you not, Bishop ain't asking you to turn this in. So I could come here, but is one better than the other? If I'm not faithful to God and I'm not faithful to what the, the, the 90%, now this 10% is done, but the 90% he gave me, I'm not handling. Do you think God is pleased with that? I don't want you to think, because we talk about building credit in your singleness, because you talk about marriage, and y'all getting kind of quiet, but we can wave this before God, and we do that. We praise him continually. We wave in him, and we like, we're faithful. We're saints of God. We're believing him. We're saying our I am's, but something ain't adding up, and people looking at you like, what in the world? What's going on? Wait a minute. When you go home, there's no application. There's no application of this with this. It's the same person. Let me see. Let me, let me not lie. Maybe I pulled up Kenny's credit report by accident. Nope. Haroline Bailey, Haroline Bailey. Same address. There's no application. You can't do God like that. I just came to tell you, you can't do God like that. Because when he looks down, when he sees you, this is catching up. This is catching up. It took me forever to finally get here. And I thank God for that. That's the one area. If I don't have nothing else, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to praise you for being faithful in my tithes and offering that you gave me employment, even when it was so stable sometimes. So top, even with those 15 jobs, I had money to bless the house of God. This helped keep lights on because everybody didn't do this. This helped put things in order here. This is the reason why, and I'm proud about that. that I took care of the house of God, but when a man is coming and he's looking at me, oh, okay, that's great, baby. That's awesome. You're a woman of God, but your house is jacked up. Yeah, you pay a tithes and offering, which pays for the lights in the house of God, but your lights is out. What, what's going on? Why are you separating that? Why are you separating that? It's the same principle. You can't come here, get all lathered up, and get all emotional, and get all in the, uh, because Sheena's praising God. That's going to draw me to her. Now we've magnified God. How dare I walk out of here without being paying my tithes and offering? That's like clockwork. But when I go home, it's just me. What am I living at home? That's what's being reflected. That's what, and this is awesome. This is not a bad thing. And some people that don't even have this, hey, I'm going to brag on this. I had to pull it up and be like, man, this thing is pretty. It's like this for a few years because I save all my stuff so I can go back. I can wave this before God. This gets his attention. And now that I got his attention, God, I got some areas I need help in. I'm not always there. It took me a while to get here. So if you're not here, you at least got to do this. This is your first step. This is your first step. If, if, who in here has a job? Who's got employment? This is not even my message. Raise your hand if you have employment right now. This is your first step. Whenever you get paid, and this is off the gross, not the net. This ain't based on what you got to take home. This is if everything is jacked up, hey, I'm going to do this if I don't do nothing else. But there's no application. This has opened up a door that I didn't walk in. This has opened up, this got God's attention, and I didn't ask him for nothing. If no more, then I need the wisdom to handle this, God. I need the wisdom. I need the know-how. You've trusted me with 90%, and according to this, I haven't been handling it properly. I want you to know, God, that you can trust me 
I got this down packed. So you make me a millionaire, you guarantee that you're going to get your part. But am I going to be able to be trusted? How am I going to be a distribution center when I'm so far behind? I ain't even got a car because they didn't repossess my car to get to somebody to distribute, to, to, to be a blessing. I can't distribute nothing because my stuff is so jacked up. I can't see my babies, Gracie and all those people here and say, hey, you know what? I remember when I came here with, with three, two little kids and then I had Davion and I had to sit in the back of the church because they was making noise. And you know what? Y'all just come over to my house and we just going to have some time where we just going to be free. I can't do that if I'm homeless. I can't invite them over. And then I'm like, okay, y'all, we just going to have a candlelight dinner today. <laughs> this reflects, because to the outside world, now, y'all in here know that this is cool. This is me. This is who I am. But when I represent myself, even on the job, trying to get a new place, you go through that credit check, you sitting there rocking, praying, Saying, you know what, well, Lord, please, 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 just please, just do the supernatural. We're living off the supernatural, and God got his part covered. He blessed you with the natural consistently every single day. He gave you the strength. He gave you the heartbeat. He gave you the blood cells to function. Everything was going in order. If something got out of whack, he straightened it out. I've been sick as a dog, didn't go to no doctor, woke up. Things starting to feel a little better. God aligned, realigned things. If it's no more than getting some rest. He took care of me. What am I doing? What am I doing for what he's given me? My praise opens up. That's introspection. This is me saying, if he come today, and the way I pray, I don't understand why he didn't come yesterday. I don't know what my husband was doing yesterday that he didn't come find me yesterday. You know, maybe... Maybe he was too busy playing around at work, talking about may the fourth be with you. Ain't nobody got time for that. I need you to be with me. <laughs> I need you to be here. Maybe he got distracted today because of Cinco de Mayo. Okay, look, I need you to focus on being with me. If he come in here today, if he walk down that aisle right now and say, you the one, I got to be like, okay, here. <laughs> here I am. Here I am. <laughs> here I am. And I don't want to show that part. I want to be like, yeah, my giving statement. Bishop said, you should have your giving statement. Don't marry nobody without a giving statement. I'm like, here's my giving statement. I'm faithful. Yeah, buddy. He might be the type of man say, you know what? How you been handling the 90%? Um, well, you just read it and tell me what you think. <laughs> you just give me a summary. <laughs> Well, I need you to help me out. If I can't do that for myself, if I can't teach that to my kids and my singleness, I don't have no right asking God to add on to that mess because that's what we do here. We play games, and we want somebody to come in, and I want to add them on to my mess, and now they got mess. And when you marry, you can't separate. You can't be like, okay, well, that's her bills. Don't call me on my job. They're like, no, they will call you. They will call your kids. They will get them out of class. That's y'all bills. They will come and wait by the church. We've seen, a, we've seen a repo man coming by the church. They will find you. Who wants to live like that? I don't want to live like that. My praise don't reflect that. My praise opens up introspective. God, mm -mm, let me be handling some things. Let me take care of some things. In my singleness, this gives me today, I got an opportunity now. Now I can look at this and say, okay, babe. Now look, honey, sweetie, don't cancel the cake yet. There's some things on here, but let me show you how it was last year and show you the progress I've made. It took some time. Let me show you this a few years ago. It wasn't as pretty like this, I, but I made some progress. I'm not a liar. I'm not just in here playing church. I'm applying the word of God. I'm absorbing. I'm learning some things. I'm increasing. I'm making some maneuvers. This year don't look like last year. I played around with all of last year. I didn't take the word and had, it wasn't a word all the way to my heel. I didn't hide the word in my heart. I let my emotions get the best of me. I let my feelings get the best of me. I was depressed, but I finally got a hold of you because I finally, finally took this thing serious. I got in the word because what happens, men come in here, they like, you go to grace. I know what's being taught. People know what's being taught at this church, church, whether they go here or not. They listen to the podcast. Everybody know who your pastor is. 
You can't go nowhere and people don't know about Grace Apostolic. They know the standard we set. They may not like Bishop's style, but they know the standard. Be in the club and somebody see you be like, don't you go to Grace? It used to be real bad when we was on TV. Man, you couldn't get away with nothing. When you, we used to be on Channel 22, Cable Channel, they would see you praising and worshiping God and be like, I done had many a co-workers. I saw, thank God I wasn't living a double life. I saw you on TV. I saw you at the Amber Harris. And that's like Bishop would call you up in the middle of the service. You could be sitting in the back where Coco is. You know what, Coco? Come here. Let me just use you for a minute. And Coco's boyfriend like, what? Really? Now, she ain't got another man on the job. Bishop talking about Coco is an awesome wife to Marcus. And her boot thing at Centrus is like, for real. <laughs> is that what's up? Is she? Mm-hmm. Marcus is like, uh -huh. <laughs> Now, wouldn't that just mess you up? That's, that's how it used to be. Thank, <laughs> some of y'all, thank God the camera not here no more. Or her boot thing come up in here. Now, what you going to do? When the coworker, the supervisor you cussed out on the job want to come here and be saved. So all the people on your job, on everybody else's job can be saved, but the people from your job don't come up in here. Hmm, not you. They can't benefit from Jesus. You're not a light. You're not a light. You get to pick and choose who you're going to be a light to. It's some difficult situations. <laughs> we got some difficult supervisors. I've been in some, ooh, some hard tests. And I said, you know what? I can't be a Sunday school teacher and love my class. But when I go to work, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in trial today. Started a trial this week. And this defendant and his, you know, his family tried to take me there. I'm like, now look at that. So you can't be a light. You get to pick and choose who you're going to be a light to. Let's take it home. So you, you love everybody else in children's church. Star is an awesome superintendent. Everybody's getting blessed. Coco's a, a teacher for little kids. Uh, Tina's got little kids. Chazarene got little kids. But when you go home, you beating up Jackson. Knowledge and Kamari got bruises. Look, Nart, Kamari, you got a little knot on your head. What happened, baby? No, 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 say nothing. Now look, see, that's how he was just writing. That's just a little, a little ink mark. How we know you didn't take the pen? Mm -mm -mm. But you sitting up in here, you Dr. Reynolds, singing your song of praise. But you can't be that at home. Something ain't right. That is no different than me being awesome with my tithes and offering and my credit report looking jacked all the way. I mean, just up. Jacked up. I don't, and some people, some of y'all be like, oh, shoot, I ain't as bad as mine, girl. You're doing good. That's not what God gave me. That's not the portion he gave me. It might be uh, 800 compared to your 300. But that's not what God gave me. How do I know? How do you know? How do you know, Mama Joe? We thank God for what you and Mother Gracie do for the anniversary. But how do you know that God's taking you to another level? How do you know what God is calling Trajan to do? It's cute. She married. We know she married now. But now what? Tamika, Jeff, now what? What's next? What's next, Sheena? You got a baby in your room. You got chunk of lug that you uh, uh, a representative of that you have influence on. You got your kids. You got Dr. Ooh, that dude is a mess. You got the general that you're responsible for. Now what? Is that supposed to just overwhelm you and beat you down? Or are you supposed to say, wait a minute, I remember when they prayed for me in the office, I remember what was spoken over me. I remember crying because of the last situation I was in. Do I want to go back? No, 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 no. Let me get it together. Let me get my mind right and say, hey, 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 it's the same Sheena that praised you when I didn't have anybody. It's the same Sheena. It's the same Linda who was faithful when there were some things going on, and I didn't know that tie check. I was like, please, that tie check clear. It's the same faithful. So being disciplined and being faithful is in you. I don't understand athletes. You can be disciplined and being faithful, and you can take, you know, uh, uh, basketball and football, and yet you're screwing everybody. It's the same person. I want you guys to be, I want to be the type of person, maybe not for you guys, I want to be the type of person that, you know what, who I say I am is who I really am, and it's reflected in every aspect of my life. If I say I trust and believe God, then I'm going to trust and believe God for everything I do, and I'm aware of what's out of whack. I'm aware of what's out of order. 
if you don't never know, y'all don't know what this look like. If I passed it around, which I'm not going to do, because I don't do you, unless you want to pay a couple of them. But if I pass this around, KJ, this is, we're talking about building up credit with God and in the natural. But if I pass this around, it won't do nothing for you. It won't do nothing for you. It's for me to say, and that's what we do. We pass around our issues. We pass around everything we got going on. I want you to know. I want you to pray for me. I want you to do and be like, wait a minute. It's, that's, that's my God. Let me, get, let me stop just giving them away. Let me take my God and get all of him and get in his presence. Let me continually praise him. Let me continually praise him. Now that I'm not looking at him the same way, and his instructions, shut up, stop speaking in tongue, shut up, and let God instruct you. That's beautiful. That's great. That's anointed. Now I need some, you to do some things. And that's where we cut him off. We just want to be heard. And then we cut him off. And we just walk up out of here. No, 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 no. A relationship with God, praise, that opens up some things. Every area in my life is going to reflect who I say I am. I'm not going to be a mockery because the enemy will magnify this. And this will beat you down so much. So you going for it. And you looking at those are some beautiful pictures of my sisters on that plane. Why can't she have that? Why can't she just walk in that? You know what? The enemy's going to bring this up. You better have a word for it. You better have a word for it. Satan. I rebuke you. I don't care what my checking account says. I rebuke you. Let me get another sum of money. I guarantee you I handle it properly this time because I'm listening. I'm getting wise counsel. Ain't no need to be talking to other broke folks. I need to find out, you know, well, what did you hear at the shareholder meeting? There's some people there to handle their money. There's some people that handle their money. Ain't no need to be posing with broke people. I could pose with somebody who's just sitting in a corner but they know how to handle their money because I want to be a distribution center. I want God to trust me. I'm tired of this. I want to leave something for my children. I want to leave this. And even this, I did this. They can't do this. This is what I did. I want to be able to leave something. I want to set them up. I don't want the church to start all over. I don't want my kids starting all over. In my singleness, for people that are married, Came late, look, this is my credit report. I'm building up credit with God. This is beautiful. This is my giving statement. Goes from January to the last week of December. Not, not missing not one beat. This is my credit report. I didn't miss the whole, matter of fact, it's some payments I ain't even made from January to the end of December. This is a snapshot of the instability this is a snapshot of not applying the word of God. This is a snapshot of not being a steward over the 90% that God has trusted me with. This is his. You don't really get too much for that. That's just belonging to him anyway. But what are you doing? I can't bless Erica with this. I can't send Davion to Berkeley with this. Now, wouldn't that be a shame? My baby got doors opened up. Say he didn't get the little scholarship he got. And, it, and trust me, it wasn't enough. So now we're sitting here like, wow. And people are like, oh, you can just get a student loan. Well, shoot, I got my own student loan. How are you going to bless your kids and you got your own? Be like, baby, I can't bless you with money to go to school because I'm still paying off for when I went. I still owe the lunch lady at Kellum. They're not going to let me do nothing. So God opened up the door. And all I have is say, God, and that's probably the reason why I'm glad I, I'm just helping me. God, let, give me a chance to get it together. My kids are watching. I, I thank God with Kenny, but he's making some of the same mistakes I made. And that don't make me feel good as a mother, that he's making some of the same mistakes. I'm, did I show him how to be careless? I'm coming here, and I'm praising him, and I'm doing everything I can, but am I going home and applying the word? Am I sitting here, some of y'all sitting here like, you know what, let's just go on to the other scriptures, and I am, because uh, this don't feel good. This, I promise you, this had nothing to do with, I want to talk about for singleness, because this is relationship class. There's some things you got to get in order in your singleness. 
Because when you marry, you can't hide. And it's some, it's some married people that got their head like, dang. I don't want to cause no arguments. Don't go home and ask your spouse for the credit report. It's too late. It's too late. Just don't, don't. <laughs> My wig, let it go. Let it go, wig. <laughs> you didn't give her your last name now. Just work it out. <laughs> and Rosie is looking like, you know what? That's a good idea. Let it go. Just work it out. Y'all work together. But it's a good thing to say, babe, what have we been doing? And if you've been married for any length of time, what are we building up? What are we depositing? How do I build up my credit in the supernatural? I want God to be able to say, oh, that's my baby. That's my baby needs something. I'm used to hearing them praise in the morning. I'm used to hearing them praise in the morning, whether it's storming or whether it's sun shining. I can't wait to bless them. God wakes you up. That's why some people get woke up in the middle of the night. You be like, what's going on? Why am I up at three in the morning? Because I want to bless you. Because I know you won't be snappy. You won't wake up talking about what you don't have. You'll wake up and doing that Psalms 34 and start praising me. Your praise is an automatic continual. You got to do that until it becomes a part of you. When the enemy is playing that video, because that video will take you somewhere. If I look at this for too long, I'm not looking at this to beat myself down. I'm not looking at this to remind me, of, oh, man, look at the divorces. Look at all you had to go through. This is my source of praise and say, look at what you blessed me through. God, you didn't have to do that. I didn't warrant coming out of that mess. I don't have a right. This keeps me from having an attitude with people that don't like me. Who cares? You know what I've been through? Who cares if you speak to me today or tomorrow? It don't matter. Who cares? God has blessed me. He didn't bless me because you liked me or didn't dislike me. If you call me Linda, Haroline, whatever you decide to call me, God has blessed me. I'm not going to get caught up in titles. Somebody called me like, I'm so sorry, Pastor Linda. That's you. That's you. I don't trip off of that. I just thank God for giving me an opportunity to come in here. I can sit in here as a janitor. I need you, Lord. I need an opportunity to hear a word, to get some things in the natural right, so that my natural and my supernatural is one. Because it's one God and it's just one me. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want my priest to come in here and I have to explain some things. And so when situations come up, he's trying to figure out, he's speaking to somebody you don't like, and he's looking at you like, well, what's going on? What's going on here? Well, you know, uh. Uh, you, you can help Tamika out to her car, but you don't say nothing to Sheena. What? Come on. You mean Bishop didn't get rid of all that on a Wednesday night? Yeah, he did. You mean that that didn't get prayed out of you all the fast that, that, that Janielle keep putting us on once a month? You, Janielle call a fast, you call a eat? You call a eat. Chili sauce call a eat. Shut up, Sheena. See, you can't say, you can't tell nobody your business at Grace. <laughs> you call it eat. Are you fast because you married and you looking holy? Oh, man. I'm telling you from experience, I ain't always been who I am today. And I'm going to be honest enough to tell you, living that double life, damn double-minded will catch up with you. You will be caught slipping. Somebody will say the wrong thing and <laughs> you'll be like, ooh. I almost punched you right up in church. <laughs> right up in church, right, right here, 2216 military. We was about to be on the news. Now what that look like? And you like, oh, but I, you know, here I'm waving this. And Capital One like, mm-hmm, I knew that part was in her. Oh, it's coming out. People on your job expect that. Oh, no, mm-mm, that's not me. You know what? I had to make some phone calls. Say, so, you know what? I, had, I didn't handle things right. I need to make arrangements. I need to get an understanding of what I can do to turn things around. Not for you. And they'll get smart with you. Well, you should have been. Now you, I'll have one. Look, hey, now you want to pay. You know, ma'am, you're right. I apologize. I didn't handle things. Well, if you didn't handle, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. First of all, I didn't have to call your ass to begin with. <laughs> I really don't have the money, but I heard a word on Tuesday night, and I'm trying to get my life together, but since you're going to be funky, I ain't paying you this year, I ain't paying you next year, and don't call me no more. <laughs> Just like that. 
Oh, Lord, forgive me. Let me just praise you for <laughs> what you've done. That's us. Come on now. Just like the, it happened, just like that. Now, you done all and cussed everybody out. And she like, and the enemy like, mm-hmm. That didn't last long. That didn't la And you like, Lord Jesus, I got to get that out of me. That's me. Now, maybe that ain't you, but that's me. I will flip in a minute. I have to remind myself, I can't just come in here and be sweet and kind and patient with you guys. And some of you guys have been a test. Amen. It's been a test. I've had to learn to love people who have hurt me because I don't expect my brothers and sisters to hurt me. Because when you come in here, you're open. And I've always tried to be honest and vulnerable and open. You know the mistakes. You, you've been with me for 22, 23, 24 years. You know my ups and downs. You, this, this is home. You're, you're my family. So I'm not expecting you to throw that up in my face because that's what they're doing on the job. So, but if I can master it here, I can master it there. I can't separate loving Cager and loving my boss. Whether they both love me or they both dislike me, I can't separate it because it's only one Linda. I can't have that double mind. And that continual praise is the first thing. If that's part of me, those daily declarations that y'all don't want to memorize, but those daily activities that I do, that becomes a part of me, so I'm just walking. I'm just walking in it. Not that things are not going to stop. Not that the enemy's not, not going to give up. He's going to keep coming with it. But my continual praise, that's why he said, read it again, Chazare. Y'all didn't let me get to no other scriptures but that. Read it again, Chazare. Psalms 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. At all times. At all times. It's hard. I, I don't know. It's some people. Y'all help me. But I dare say it's almost impossible to praise God and with that same mouth curse man. I, I don't know. That's kind of, hmm. This mouth, I want God to get used to hearing this voice. It's the same voice that your husband and your kids are used to hearing because you, you're yelling at them. That same, oh, man, all time. And that's why David said that, because if you're doing that at all times, you don't have time for what? You don't have time for nothing else. Man, I can't be cussing you out, Sheena. I'm praising God. I'm so busy praising God. And it say when things are going right, and it say when I understood, and it say when I had everything worked out, I don't even know how to handle this. I don't know what I'm going to do. But that praise, that continual praise does something for me. It, what, keep going. Keep reading. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My, uh, go ahead. I just want to read it. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. My soul's going to make a boast. You, you boast in that little outburst I had with the bill collector on the phone. That's the wrong kind of boast. That's an outburst. Get Ephesians real quick. Get Ephesians 1. I'm almost done. I got to go pick up my son. I hope if you married, I mean, I'm, I'm single, so I'm coming from a single point of view. But I've been married. I've been divorced. I understand some of the things that have come up. It ain't always been his fault. There's some things that I did not have handled. I'm going to be honest with you. When I got married, I didn't disclose some things. It's called disclosure. In law, it's called discovery. You need to let them know, here, here here's everything that I'm coming with. I kind of hid some things. Kind of put some things back on the back until it was time to start getting some paperwork, some insurance papers and and housing papers, and they like, well, dang, we, your wife don't. And he like, baby, well, you know, the man ran your social security number, and some things came up. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Now, if y'all trifling together, okay, you know, work it out together. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm saying I'm taking this class. The man of God has been teaching this so that I can't demand, I want to see your credit report what your criminal history look like, and your stuff, you got a warrant in Minnesota. <laughs> you need to know uh, he got violent tendencies. He's been beating on women. Because that's what you bring into your kid. I mean, man, I got giants, but they're respectable giants. I don't want my boys bound down to somebody that's abusive. And I can't ask you to show me what you got in your history, and then I got chili sauce coming out the closet. Get Ephesians, Ephesians 1. You get it? Yes. 
I'm just teaching a few principles. I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to do a cartwheel. We're just going to praise God that he put up with some mess and say, God, my praise this time, this time when I praise you, I'm going to listen for a response because I know my praise is going to get your attention. My praise is going to attract Coco's praise. That's going to attract Ambrosia's praise. That's going to jump over here to Vicky. Now God has been magnified. What are you saying now that you've been magnified? What are you saying? He's got something to say. He'll give you a strategy. Some of us put up with so much mess. I'm telling you from experience, we put up with so much mess, and it's not until you're in a situation where you need a little extra this or you need a little extra that. You want to be a blessing to somebody, and you just strap because you have not been diligent and you have not been honest before God. I want to open up a, a business or a, I want to write a book. You can't get a book. You can't get a pamphlet published. Y'all, you don't, your stuff, you done messed over everybody. In the church, out of the church, you double-minded. That stuff has to be exposed. You have to get that out of you. It's not good enough if y'all think that I'm awesome. When God is saying, I know some things about you that I'm not going to, we can't go no further with. You got to get that out of you. Because that's what the enemy plays you. When you leave here tonight, I guarantee you people have gone home and had to fight depression. Some people come in here just smiling, barely making it in here. But you ain't applying a word. You can clap. And if Coco sing, how can you not clap when Coco and Sheena sing? Man, I'll clap. You can be dead and you clap. When you hear Coco sing that song, you can make it through 45 hours, 45 minutes of church, a couple of hours on Sunday. You can make it through. That's cool. You can do that and go right back home to your depressed mess. Go right back home to your ignorance. Go right back home to your bitterness. Go right back home. That's what you're depositing. You got to go out of your way to make a deposit into God's, your heavenly bank account is, I'm going to love everybody. It's not just in here. I'm going to love everybody on my job. It's a challenge. I'm going to make sure that I'm speaking something. If I'm used to praising God, then I should be used to praising Trey John. Trey John's easy. She's luscious. She's, she's lovable. Okay, well, then I'm going to be used to praising my neek. And I'm so used to praising my neek. Well, my neek is always smiling. You can't say nothing that's going to penetrate that. How did my baby get here? He just walked here. How you get here, Davion? I'm supposed to come pick you up? Is it a male friend? Nate, go check who that friend is. Real talk. Check whose car he got out of. You know how your kids just, just dropped me off at the corner. That praise is going to now trickle down to Erica. Now I got down. Now Mother Gracie's feeling like, okay, that's who I am. That's what I bring. Not that... Trey John said, Mom, you know, we got the situation. Um, how do I handle my money? Mm. Next. <laughs> my niece's like, hey, sis, you know, me and we, we trying to do something. We're going to buy a new home. What do you think? Mm. Next. Erica's like, you know what? I think I should pull my credit report because I'm single and I want God to bless me. What, what should I look forward to next? Mother Gracie, like, by the time I get here, like, don't ask me nothing. <laughs> I can't help you. But you, but you my Sunday school teacher. But you just got through teaching. But you this. Be like, man, that's just for that. I don't want to be the type of woman of God that I compartmentize my holiness. Don't compartmentize your holiness. I'm only holy for this scenario, this area. When God need me to teach, then I just lathered up. When he need me to do this. But you can't ask me to do that. And you can't ask me to do them at the same time. I don't get a break from living holy. I don't get a break from applying the word of God. I don't get a break. I can't separate them. My only point, and I, I don't know where I'm at, why I'm here, and we're going to get Ephesians and we're done. My only point is it's the same person. I trust God for that. I have to, that thing has to trickle over to things that I never expected I was going to be able to trust God for Mother Ann. It was easy. People look at you like, man, you have some phenomenal boys. I thank God. I get complimented by my boys all the time. I can't just trust God to raise them, and now I can't trust him to get them to school. That don't make sense. Why am I getting fearful now that he's going all the way to Boston? Wait a minute. He done made it through Omaha North, honey. That alone. That alone. It's the same God. It's the same Linda. It's the same praise. 
Read Ephesians 1, 17 real quick, and we are out of here. Everybody have it? Read it anyway. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He will give it to you. He will give it to you. You have no excuse for living in lack. Maybe your mama, we talked about earlier, people being single, Maybe they change their underwear once a week, and maybe your mom didn't show you how to change your drawers. God will give you the wisdom to wash your butt and show you, and he will reveal somebody in the church that smells fresh, and you, and I'm, y'all, y'all laughing, but we've had people who were ashamed. You'll be amazed at who don't have mamas, who don't know something as simple as you got to get, open up the meat, get some water up in there but you want to be married because you come to class and that's what you hear. You'd be amazed. The people that are raised without father. My boys, you know, I've said it before. They used to go to the bathroom. I used to make them wipe themselves when they pee. I didn't know men just jiggle and put their stuff away. That's nasty to me. It still is. They flush the toilet before they're even done. I mean, it's just still a constant stream and they just flush and just flip-flop and go on about their business. That's nasty. Well, I, have to, I don't have a problem buying tons of drawers. You can get a five-pack of hangs. I don't want to see them stains in your hangs. Well, if you get married, you don't know that, Gracie. You get married and you're doing laundry, you're like, that's nasty. I don't want to wash. Now you got a problem because you ain't washing your husband's drawers. I raised three boys. I done seen some. My bathroom was a chore. It was a part-time job. Piss everywhere. I don't, I don't understand that. Come on, Ambrosia. Am I lying? I don't get that. You lift up the seat. You see Tuesday's piss, and you just piss on and just go. I don't get That's nasty to me. I don't see it because I put the seat down. My boys are trained. Now, that's one thing. If my seat is up, I know Trey John was over there because my boys are trained. That seat goes down. You'll get punched in the throat for leaving a seat up in my house. You only got to do it a couple of times, and they good. But see, I got to get, I, I'm, I'm going to get married. Maybe my husband, like, hey, I'm the head of this house. I can do what I want to do. I can't punch him in the throat. <laughs> I just, man, those are little things that I have to say, God, you got to give me wisdom. Because that would be something, I'm so stuck in my ways, I'm so this, I'm so that, that the little things will just ruin a love affair. Now we bickering, not even realizing the pressure on the job. Now he's just mad. You, you just dragging it out, Linda. I am, because it's the little thing that add up. And if you marry, you know those little things add up. Now y'all ain't speaking to each other. Why? Because he didn't wipe the piss. <laughs> and he didn't take out the trash. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't take out trash and do dishes. Well, now Damian's moving away. Thank God Kenny live close. Come take out my trash now. But there's little things. I have to work on me. That's the wisdom. God, you got to reveal some things to me. There's some things in Linda that Linda don't like. So I know he going to have a problem with my neek. And I got to be honest and say this is who I really am. You can love all the good things. I can be disciplined and, and raise my boys. But can I take that faith? And believe God for getting him to school, paying for him to go to school, paying for him to, for his children, building up a legacy. Have I taught him a So that now, no, you ain't got to worry about it because we're almost done. So that now he can carry on. My boys are a reflection of me. They're a reflection of my faith or my lack thereof. My faith or my lack thereof. I want people to see my boys walking by faith, the arrogancy of purpose, because that's how he sees his mom. I have to make sure I'm not defrauding somebody, that I'm not presenting something that's not real, that has nothing to do with them. I'm single today, and I have to make sure today I get some stuff revealed. Ain't no need of me faking like I got it all together when I'm sharing just with you guys. 
that this has been some instability. There's been some lack. There's been some non-application of the word of God. My praise, and we started out with praise. Your praise in the natural gets you to the spiritual, the supernatural, which is what Bishop taught on. That also gets some things revealed. You need the wisdom of God to know how to handle the real you. Amen? Amen. That's it. I'm done. I am out of here. Thank God for whoever brought me the water. You get an opportunity. It's not about me to not praise me because y'all show I'm just honest. I'm just honest. It doesn't bother me. When you are honest, when you give your testimony like that, Monique, then you be held accountable for it. Enemy can't beat you up with it because you didn't already put it out there. So I can't sneak. I've done some things where I've been sneaky. I didn't hide some things and got caught slipping. I got caught slipping. I'm just being honest with me. People thought on the outside, oh, she got it all together. Nope, on the inside was bitterness. Hurt. I was really mad about that. I made it through a couple of hours on Sunday, but I was really upset. I was really bitter, and it spilled over. This is the result of bitterness and undiscipline. Every head bow. Every head bow. I just don't want you guys to be like me. And you're singing this. I don't want you to.